I'm going to get, I'm going to get right in um, to it. I'm going to pray first before I get into my message. Lord, we thank you on this evening, Father God, for being able to come together and be able to fellowship amongst each other's Father God. Lord, I ask even now, Lord, that you would be on the call, Father God, that you would be in this message, Father God, that I will step back, that you will move forward, Father God, and that you will touch those on the call, Father God, to, Father God, be able to understand and receive the message and let it minister to them and things that they may have um, going on life to life, day to day. Father God, and I pray those that are not able to make it on a call, Father God, that you would still touch them where they are. And those that are trying to get on a call, Father God, that no obstacles or stumbling blocks will get in their way, Father God, that you would make the way and the path clear for them to be able to get on the call, Father God. So Lord, I step backwards again and ask that you will move forward and that your Holy Spirit will be at my aid, Father God. And we thank you on tonight, Father God, in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so my message again tonight is after you've done all you can. And I actually came up with this title, um, just going through life's challenges and things um, this year. It just really has been a pretty much rough year for me. Um, and normally um, when I do my praise and worship, I'm in the house or I'm in my car um, and this particular day, I was just in my car and I was just crying out to God. And in the midst of me crying out to him, I had said, God, after I've done all I can, what can I do? That was my question to God. Um, and then my question was, well, God, have I done all that I can? Um, was, you know, my question to God. And um so when I reached out, well, when me and Gwen began to talk, um, Evangelist Gwen began to talk, I told her that I did have a message. So as God um, began to minister to me, this was back in, i say, early part of November, um, where, like I said, life just had some a lot of challenges for me. Um, but before November, this actually started, I think, around April of this year. Um, where I just had a lot of anxiety. Um, it was really crippling me. Not only did I have um, anxiety, I had a lot of fear. And I had just came to a point where I was just so tired of living in fear and anxiety and it crippling me all my life, like all my life. Um, you could just say any little thing to me and I would just get fearful, heart be pumping so fast, anxiety. I went to the doctor. She put me on three different types of um, medicine, anxiety pills. Um, it just seems like it seemed like none of them was working when I did try them. And um, one day I was just like, I'm not going to be taking these pills. Like, I just, I, I can't do it. Like, I just can't take these pills because uh, I won't fill it up. I won't fill it down. It was like I was taking the medicine, but I was still feeling the same way. So I was like, I don't even know what this medicine is doing to me. So I stopped taking the medicine. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to try God. So in the midst of that, I had um, spoke with Evangelist Gwen and Evangelist Marie um, in regards to some things that I had been going on. And um I'm sure y'all can recall, um, but those, these sisters, they, they really prayed for me and went to war for me. And I even went to war for myself because I was sick and tired, um, of being sick and tired. Like I was just really sick and tired and I was ready to just give up and throw in a towel, um, with everything that I had going on. So in the midst of that, of me, um, speaking with them, praying, I, I started fasting and, you know, even things weren't continued, like they weren't going my way. It was just like, a, a, I felt like a breath of fresh air that had came over me. I mean, when I tell you I couldn't sleep at night, I couldn't sleep. I was, I would maybe get an hour or two of sleep. I was waking up. I would be sweating. I was shaking. I was grabbing covers. I was shaking. Like I couldn't get out of the bed. I was missing work. I couldn't eat. I didn't even want a drink of water. That's how bad it had got. But 
in the midst of that, I began to pray and I began to fast and I began to stand on the word of God. And I began to come out of myself and be, and come out of doubt. And it was in that season of what I was going through. It was foggy and I, I really didn't understand what I was going through and why things had to happen the way they did. But I thank God for how it all happened. Um, it built my faith. It built my character. It built who, what I was supposed to be in God and still is building me but I thank God for that and everything that I went through because again it was building me and then I didn't even I didn't understand so continuing to go on month after month even though I was feeling free I was just still not understanding that even though I'm feeling free and I know some of y'all may you know have had times where you feel like look I done prayed I done fasted you know I done prayed and I done fasted and I done worshiped and I done prayed and I done fasted I done worshiped the mothers done prayed for me my sisters done prayed for me you know daddy done prayed for me I mean the saints done prayed for me the you know we done fasted together and it's like you know God I just really need a break and that's when I had came from like, God, after I've done all I can, like, what can I do? Like, after I done fasted, after I done prayed, after I done, you know, like I said, consecrated myself, after I done went to my sisters and prayer, after I denounced and renounced things and asked God for forgiveness and, you know, got on my knees and just worship and just start saying in his word and being, you know, faithful and listening and, um, you know, going listening to Bible, you know, being on Bible study and trying to give words of encouragement, trying to give to people, you know, and give wherever I can, like, you know, God, like what 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 else can I do? You know? And God told me to trust him. And that was the hardest thing for me to do because I never knew what trust was to trust God so just really trust him and that when I say God had my back up against the wall and I did not know what to do and my mother couldn't help me my daddy couldn't help me nobody could help me it it was a God thing and I felt like you know, we talk about it and we heard about it, but it's like, Dag, I'm, I'm, I'm the one in the seat now. I'm the one where nobody can help me. Prayer will get me through. Fasting will get me through, but nobody can change my situation and what I'm going through. Nobody can feel my pain. Nobody can understand me to the point where it was nights that I was shaking that I thought I was about to die. That's how bad it had had me and it had fear had crippled me and I just could not get through I just could not understand so when I cried out to God and I was like God I was like I don't know what else to do you know I told him I was like God I said what do I do when I feel like I'm doing everything possible I'm trying to live right. I'm trying to teach my kids. You know, I'm trying to do right by my kids. I'm in my house and I'm praying and I'm anointing it and I'm just telling people about your goodness and about your love and about your power. And I'm still feeling like I'm not getting through to you. I feel like you're not hearing me. You're not listening to me. And all he kept saying was, trust me, trust me. <laughs> And I'm like, okay, God, I'm trusting you. But then I was like, am I really, really, really trusting him? Because I still had a little ounce of, of that fear. So I continue to, you know, stay in my word, continue to, you know, just give God all that I had. Even when I felt like I didn't want to give God all I had, even when I felt like I'm tired and I don't want to do nothing, things are just not working out for me. Even when I had pity parties in the midst of what I was going through, God still was saying, trust me. So in the midst of God telling me to trust him, I continue to pray. I continue to, you know, talk to my sisters in Christ and, you know, depend on them for, you know, prayer and just, you know, pray for me and pray for me. But in the midst of me going through, people were coming to me for strength. People were um, coming to me, asking me like, 
you know, like, oh, you really, you know, you love God. I mean, even people was just testing my faith, like, oh, okay, you trust God. You really think he gonna do that for you? Okay, so you go on a fast, and after y'all go on a fast, God just supposed to open up this door, like God just supposed to put it in your hand, he supposed to put it in your lap, whatever it is that you, you know, fasting for, like this man and this guy just supposed to do that. And I had people like tell me that, like, oh, so, you know, I wasn't telling them that I was fasting, but just speaking on fasting and they would be like, oh, okay. So after you do all of that, like, you know, God just supposed to do what, you know? And, you know, I just laughed at it. And I, I, after people was saying that to me, I was laughing at it, but then I just really started trusting God even the more because I just felt like, you know what, God, these people laughing at me, they really feel like that you're not real. They really feel like, like so many, I started seeing, God was like removing the scales from my eyes like you know I started seeing so many people that really don't believe God like really don't trust in God that really trust in man that really you know trust in crystals that really trust in voodoo that really trust in you know witchcraft or really trust in everything that the pastor say or what their friends say but they really hadn't really didn't know who God was and they couldn't really go to God in prayer because they just felt like oh, okay this man is just supposed to do all of these things so in the midst of that it made me stronger to say you know what God I want you to show them who you are through me and it was at that moment where I was just like God I'm just gonna give you my all I can't do it you know um even I even was like you know God I give myself to you and I will I'm gonna be celibate and again I felt like dang I'm celibate I ain't seeing nobody you know I'm just being so faithful and you know, it seemed like some, it, 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 I never would say if it ain't one thing or another, because I don't, I know that life and death is in the power of the tongue, but I was just like, okay, I'm doing good. And then it'd be like, it's something else. Okay. I'm, I'm doing okay. And then it was like, it was just something else. It was just like little things was just coming and it was just trying to test me. And it was just, you know, trying to, you know, break me down to where it is. I, I wasn't even making enough money to pay bills and have food in my house for my kids. I was going to food banks, you know, and I wasn't really even talking to anybody what I about what I was going through. And even though, you know, it things were really, really tight for me and I um wasn't really working during the summer. It was just a lot that I just had going on. So um God just kept saying, you know, trust me. And then I as I began to continue to trust him and put my faith in him, I was like, God, you know, I want you to do a thing in me that is only can be a God thing. Like it, it, it gotta be you. Like I always would tell God, God, I want you to show up and show out. That's what I would tell God. So even in the midst of what I was going through, um, I began to do, you know, different fast things. Um, like I said, praying and it seemed like everything started, you know, going a little bit smoother with my kids. We, you know, we're praying together as a family, you know, we're worshiping and stuff like that. But my kids would leave and they would go back to their, go to their dad's house and come home and they'd be like different. So it's like, I had to rework it all over again and do things all over again to where as the enemy was trying to test me with their father coming in, you know. Um, cursing me out real bad. I mean, speaking real down on me and telling me I was a fake and phony church girl. I want no real church girl. Like you fake the church hypocrites, just all of this different stuff trying to um break me down. It, it was just like, okay, God, but I'm really, 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 you know, I'm gonna trust, trust in you to the point that I had got to the point where I started laughing and I was like, God, you really gonna do it. And, um, one night I was um driving a friend home and me and her was just talking and she was just like, how did you get to the point where you just really rely on God and you really just trust God? And it was at that moment where I was like, what? And I just looked at her and I'm like, what you mean? How did it, how did I really just start? trust in God and she was like I just see it in you I see it all over you like you really really trust God like every time I talk to you you just always talking about God and how you gonna trust God and it was at that moment that I didn't realize that I had went from point a from all the way to where I was trusting God and leaning independent on him and I didn't even realize that it was like, like I like I was just floating so 
I began to tell her, I was like, you know, how can I not trust God? I was like, how can I not depend on God? And, you know, she has said, well, how, how did you get there? And I began to tell her, like, when you, you know, God don't, God never lies. God never, never, never lies. God never breaks a promise. You know, I said, God's word will, um, you know, he will bring heaven and earth to a close before his word come back void. God would never lie to me. He would never let me down. If God told me he's going to do something, he's going to do it. God is going to perform it. God is going to do any and everything. You know, he's going to do it for me. And I just began to like go on a rant about God. And it was at that moment that I was just like, oh my God, like I've really, really, really been out here trusting God. Like I've really been depending on God. Like I really haven't been depending on anybody, you know, um, whether it be financially, mentally, spiritually, psychologically, like I've really been leaning and depending on him. I didn't even know that I made it this far. Like I didn't even know that I was here. Like, oh, you know, I was just like, oh my God. And I began to get excited because I was like, God, this is only you. And when I say that at that moment, I was like, I really trust God. And it was like a wow factor for me because I could not believe that I really trust God. I'm 40 years old. And out of the 40 years, I always wavered in my faith, to be honest, because I'm like, I don't know if God going to do it. God, is you is he going to do it? It was like I was doubting him. And my family and friends will always be like, what? Why do you be doubting him? Why do you keep doubting him? God always come through for you. God always come through for you. And then it was just that little um, inkling of, you know, not having a faith where the enemy will come in and be like, yeah, but what if he don't, what if he don't come through this time? Then what? What you going to do? Oh, he always come through. But what if he don't come through this time? What if he don't do it? this time what if he let you down this time what if he really don't come through then what you gonna do you know and it was like I started to think that but then I had to tell the devil that he had to shut up and get thee behind me and had to rebuke him and I was like "Uh -uh, uh uh-uh uh-uh because I have come too far to come this far and I was like no I was like you know God I, I just really 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 trust you and I was just you know telling my friend I was like I can't do nothing but trust God like I can't give up on him because he don't give up on me he's gotten me this far when I just felt like I was about to lose my mind when I felt like I didn't have the strength when I felt like I couldn't even pray pray for myself when I felt like my back was against the wall and I had nobody and it was just me and my kids and I'm in the house with them but I still felt like I was alone and I had nobody like I couldn't even pick up the phone and call a best friend I couldn't pick up the phone and call a sister call my brother my mother my auntie like I was my mouth was zipped to the point I could not call no body and I didn't even have the strength to call them but it was God that was carrying me he was carrying me and I didn't even know that he was carrying me so as I began to um things were you know continuing to happen and um one day you know like I said I'm I'm like I'm out here I'm just out here trusting God that's what I'm telling people I'm out here trusting God I'm depending on him and um one day I was at work and some things had transpired on my job. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to trust you, God. That's all I kept saying was, I'm going to trust you, God. I'm going to trust you. And I had got upset. But immediately when I got upset, God was like, Mm-mm, that's the enemy. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. So I said, okay, God, I came home. I prayed. And I was like, God, I'm just going to trust you. I'm going to trust you. And so I got to work again and I was just sitting down and I was listening to my gospel music. And God told me, he was like, I want you to praise me. So I was like, praise you. I was like, God, praise you. Like, okay, I'm at work, you know, and, you know, it's kids in here, you know, and God was like, no, I want you to praise me because I'm about to shake some things up. Now, mind you, I'm at work and I watch kids, but my kids hadn't came into um the center at that at that time we were still waiting on them so I got up and I just had a vision of me outside just praising God so I got up and I went in the bathroom um and I just began to worship God and I began to just thank him and I did not know what was happening I didn't know what was being um shook you know shaking up I didn't know what was going on. I was out here just trusting God. Let me tell y'all, I had overdue bills like it won't know tomorrow. And I was paying 
on it as much as I could. And then I, I was still trusting God. I was like, okay, the people say they're going to cut me off. Okay, like, God, I'm just still trusting you. Like, when I say I ain't flinch, I didn't flinch. And, you know, I didn't go to my mom. I didn't go to nobody. I didn't ask them for nothing. They, nobody knew what I was really going through. And um, so my God was like, just praise me. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to shake up some things. So I'm like, okay. And I had told my co- co-worker and she began to get excited with me. And she started praising God too. So um, we went back to work the next day. When I got back to work the next day, I'm working overtime, working all of these hours. And they tell us that we can't work. They cut in our hours. Um. They didn't need us. And the lady was real nasty. You know, I could just see the spirit that she had on her. And I was like, wow. I was like, why is she being so nasty? You know, we thinking these people thinking that they're going to get these hours. We're going to get this check, you know, and it was really going to help me out, you know. And I, I had got upset to whereas I had talked to my supervisor, supervisor, because I was like, this is just not fair. You know, you don't treat people like this. So, you know, my coworker, she was like, we just going to pray about it. We're going to pray about it. We're going to pray about it, which I do thank God for her. Um, So, you know, as I began to pray or whatever, went went back to work. They told us we can report back to the center. We just had to do our regular job. And then in the midst of all of that, maybe like um, we had got a text that was asking us, do we want to work hours or called and asked us, do we want to work extra hours? They needed, you know, needed us. So in the midst of all of that, I had um came home. So when I came home, my mom had called and, you know, she was like, some things is going on, you know, within my family, um, you know, and uh, my brother, he was just under attack. And, um, and I was like, wow, I was like, you know, the enemy is really trying to come in and he is really trying to attack my family. So I was in the kitchen and I was cooking and, um, as I was in the kitchen and I was cooking, I was looking, my daughter was getting ready to go to work. She works the graveyard shift. So I had heard God say terminate. So I thought it was me. I thought I was like, oh no, I'm just, you know, getting a little paranoid. Like, you know, my child got to be to work on time. So I'm just thinking that. So my daughter comes home and she says at three o'clock in the morning, 3 a.m. in the morning, she turns my light on. And I had heard something and I was like, Lord, is somebody trying to come through my door and rob the house? So I got my eyes closed. I'm praying and I look up and it's my daughter. So she turns the lights on and she says, mom, I lost my job. So it was at that moment and I was like, oh my God, I was like, Lord, you just had said the word terminate, but I didn't get it. I didn't understand. So I had told my daughter and she was like, well, mom, why you didn't tell me? And I was like, I thought maybe that I was thinking and I was like, hold on, because, you know, God has spoke to me before. But like I said, I felt like I wasn't hearing from him. I felt like, am I far from him? Am I out of the loop? Like I'm still praying, I'm still worshiping, but I I don't know if I'm really like hearing God. Am I not being quiet enough? Am I not being attentive? Like, you know, I was just like, am I not hearing him? So I was like, oh my God. Okay. So he told me to worship him and praise him because he was shaking up some things. Mama called brother going through some things. Um, you know, dad going through some things you know, um, find, you know, it, it was like the enemy was coming in trying to just touch on everything. And then my mind began to trigger like, okay, I cannot go back to that mindset of anxiety of, of not trusting God. So I, I said, you know what? Okay. So I, I la- I started laughing and I looked at the time and I was like, it's 3 30 AM in the morning. And you are coming home to tell me that you lost your job. I, st- I bust out laughing and I told my daughter, I was like, I know you looking at me like, why am I laughing? I was like, and I know you looking like you sad. I said, but I'm going to worship God right now at 3.30 a.m. in the morning because that's when the enemy is busy the most. I said, we going to worship him right now. I don't care if I wake up the neighbors. I was like, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy. I just began to start praising him because I was like, God, you told me to worship you. You were shaking up some things. And when I tell y'all, I did not know what God was doing. I did not know what he was doing, but I was being obedient. 
because we know that his word says obedience is better than sacrifice. So I was just being obedient, obedient. I was like, okay, okay, God. So I began to just tell him, tell him, start speaking to my daughter and speaking into her. You know, I was telling her, you know, God does everything for a reason. Things happen for a reason. We're not going to get upset. We're not going to throw in the towel. We're not going to get defeated. You know, you're not going to walk around here and being depressed, but we're going to believe God that he has something better. We got to wait for God to see what he is going to do for you. We're going to trust him. And I, and, and I believe God, I said, now you got to put your faith to work. I told my daughter, I said, like, I had to put my faith to work. I said, you got to start putting your faith to work because I can continue to pray for you, but I can't have the faith for you. You have to have your own faith. I was like, so now you got to have the faith and you got to activate that faith. I was like, and you got to watch God go to work on your behalf so that you can see the manifestations of what he can do. I said, mama can tell you all day. I said, but see, it ain't even about me. I said, this is a God thing. It's a God thing. So I began to go to prayer and I began to pray because I was like, the enemy is really trying to come in and he really trying to cut up. He really trying to get my brother down. He's trying to get my parents down you know he's trying to have my daughter down he's trying to get my family and attack my family but I was like I rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus I mean I just went into a whole like praise I even woke up the next morning listening to my gospel music and praying and worshiping and I you know told my daughter I love her I had to go to work and I was like God about to do something I was like God is about to do something I said you mock my word today I said when I tell you that God is getting ready to do something I said, get excited. I told her, I said, get excited. I said, don't wait. Get excited now. I said, we don't know what he's about to do. I said, but I'm going to trust him. I am going to trust him. Then I got a bill in the mail from Dominion Power saying that they was, my bill was like $1,200. And I was a disconnect notice. Like, you got to have this $1,200 or we going to cut you off. I said, okay, God. So I didn't. I didn't get scared. I was just like, okay. I was like, I don't know where I'm going to get the $200 from. You know, I know I'm getting paid. I know I have this, this, that, and the third. So then the, my car note people call. And they say it. And I just have to be transparent with y'all so y'all can get where I'm going. So the car people called and it was like, okay, well, Miss Jenkins, you're almost 60 days behind. We need a payment today. I'm like, Lord, how am I going to pay that? And then I'm like, well, I already know. And I told the lady, I said, I done made two payments in one month. I was like, hold on, what's going on? So she began to talk to me and began to explain to me. And I was like, okay, you know, I didn't know this. Um, I thought I was caught up and she was like, okay, well we need it or you about to get repossessed. I'm like, okay, I got to figure out if I need, I'm going to have a car. Am I going to pay the light bill? Like I got to figure it out. So I'm like, why am my light bill so high? So, um, they had added a bill from earlier part of this year from my business onto that. So I was like, okay, all right, God. So I called, you know, the Dominion people and I was like, okay, I'm gonna see if I can get an extension. And I was like, I'm a, I'm, you know, a God, I'm gonna just, you know, I'm gonna figure it out. And normally I would just get so anxious that I'll start calling my mom. I'll start calling grandma and everything, but I did not call nobody. You know, I didn't call nobody. I had talked to my friend about it in a conversation, but I didn't actually pick up the phone to call her to talk about it. We were just talking and I, and you know, I began to talk to her. We were talking about bills and I just began to explain to her, um, you know, so my daughter, she, she's part of a union. So I get home and she's like, Hey mom, I'm getting ready to go to the union. I got to talk to the union. So I was like, okay. So she goes, she talks to the union. So come to find out this man was trying to retaliate. Her supervisor was trying to retaliate on her because a folk, fight apparently or something broke out at work and she had to write a statement and he got upset with her but he had made some sexual um uh, what's the word uh he just made some sexual comments you know to her so I said okay so you know she reported this information so I said Yanni I was like just trust God I was like you gotta trust God and I just seen my daughter you know, um, well, she was just staying in the house and she won't get up. She was in the bed. She had, was losing weight by the day because she won't eat. In, and my daughter can eat. I'm cooking and she ain't really eating. I'm even offering her food. She don't want it. So I'm like, OK, God, so I'm praying. 
I ain't telling nobody. I'm just praying. I'm just praying. I didn't even tell nobody she had lost her job. I didn't call my mom. I didn't call nobody. I said, this is on you. If they ask you, you got to tell them yourself. I don't have nothing to do with that. So um, we were sitting down and we were talking and I said, well, you know, you could file unemployment and stuff. And I said, but, you know, I said, I said, well, let's, let's just wait. Let's just wait. Let's just, you know, let's just, I said, we just gonna give it to God. We gonna give it to God. And I was excited about giving it to God, like never before. I was like, we just gonna really give it to God because I just really wanted to see God's power. Because again, he told me, praise, praise me because I'm gonna shake up some things. So I'm like, okay. And I was like, God, like you've been speaking to me like never before. Like I can really hear you now. And when I tell y'all, I was just excited on the mere fact that I could really hear God again. I mean, it was just an overwhelming feeling. Like I, it was just so unexplainable. Like I couldn't even tell nobody like the feeling that was going through me. Cause it was just like, oh my God, like somebody meeting a celebrity, but it was just more than just meeting a celebrity. It was like, oh my God, he's talking to me. It's, he really, really said this. And it was just like, oh my God, I really can't hear him. Um, so I was telling my daughter, I was like, praise him, praise him. And I was sitting at work and someone was like, tell your daughter to praise me. I, so I called her. I was like, you at home? She was like, yeah. I was like, praise God. I was like, go, go, go and praise him now. I said, whatever you're doing, just stop what you're doing. I was like, and praise him and praise him. So um, again, like I said, I won't worry about the bill or nothing. And I ended up, I was driving um, down the street and then the, the electricity bill came to my mind so I was like let me pull over <laughs> let me see if there's any outreach ministries that can help me because you know I could do half of my bill but I don't have the whole thing I was like let me see if anybody can help me and I began to look up for help like on my phone but then I got distracted and I didn't go and look for it no more so I ended up going into the store and as I was going into the store, I had went in the store to get some lip gloss. So, well, fast forward before that, I was going to, um, I was going to, to Marshall's. So I get to Marshall's and I see this lady that's standing outside. And I think we had just had Bible study and we were talking and then I had, was talking with um, one of my friends and we were just talking about how, you know, um, being a blessing to people and giving, um, you know, giving to the poor is what God really wants us to do. If we do that, you know, that is, you know, taking care of God. So I had seen this lady and her four children and they were standing outside. So I'm like, well, Lord, I ain't got no money to give her. I'm already trying to figure out, you know, my situation. And I'm already trying to go into Marshall's to, to find something, you know, um, I was like, it's been, you know, some money for a gift. And I was like, that I really can't even do. So I was like, you know, I was just like, God, I'm just gonna trust you. So I seen the lady and I was just like, okay, I was like, I'm gonna give her something. And then I was like, well, I don't really have no change or nothing like that. So I was like, well, maybe I'll see her when I come back out. If not, um, then oh well. So I come back out and I'm so busy running my mouth on the phone that I, I looked up and there was the lady again. And I'm looking, I'm like, dang, I didn't even know I was coming back this way to even see her. So I looked down at my purse and I had a 20. So I got the 20 out, gave gave it to her. And then I was like, Lord, I done not gave that lady that $20. I was like, and I'm supposed to be paying this electricity bill. I was like, but I don't even got the money to pay the electricity bill. So I was like, oh, well, I was like, God, I'm just trusting you. So I get to the light and I heard the enemy like, how are you going to get her $20? And you got this bill. What is you crazy? Like, and I was like, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. I was like, that $20 won't going to make or break this bill that I got to pay. So I keep on going. I get to Walgreens. I get in the store. And when I get to the register, the lady is like, um, when she gave me the total, I was like, uh, uh, I was like, that shouldn't be my total. I was like, that's, that's not what my total is supposed to be. And so I was like, something ain't right. And so she was like, okay, well, I'm gonna have to check. So as she began to check, I was like, okay, I got, you know, $10 over here in this account. Let me transfer this $10 over like that. So I was like, I'm just gonna have to figure it out later. So when I began to do that, and pulled up my account, it had said I had a deposit. Oh, look. I was like, what in the world? And I looked again because I thought my mind was playing tricks on me. So I paid the lady. I come out of the store and I looked. Um, and I'm sure uh, Evangelist Marie and not only Evangelist Marie, but Evangelist um, Gwen can attest to this because I called them at the beginning of the year because someone had did my taxes and messed my 
the taxes was messed up real bad. And the IRS was sending me letters saying that they was going to look into it. You know, I had to wait 60 days. Then the 60 days became 120 days from 120 days to I didn't get anything to me getting a letter saying that I won't get number $900 back. Now I got kids that I'm claiming ain't make that much money. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to have to take this and I'm just going to have to put it in, you know, and just take the $900 and shut my mouth up. It is what it is, you know, and I have to get a better tax person next year to, you know, get my taxes straight. And when the IRS said he, they owe me $900, when I say the Lord gave me double, triple my for my trouble, quadruple, and it was so unexpected, I didn't even know that it was coming. And I looked, and I'm outside Walgreens, like, I'm like, uh-uh, this ain't right. I'm looking through it, like, who who made this deposit? Somebody playing on my account. Somebody messing with, oh, Lord, somebody, I'm thinking somebody just scammed me, or somebody that did something, and I'm, I'm just looking, and I'm scrolling and scrolling, and it says the IRS. So I was like, what? I had just talked to them, and the lady was like, well, I guess you could claim your kids next year, like that. And I'm like, well, how are you going to say something like that? But, you know, the IRS always think they right, whatever. So I'm like, I can't argue with these folks. So I just, I'm looking, and the people is coming into the store. And when I tell y'all, I just bust out crying, and I got in my car, and I had, um, I had just started praising God, praising him, and I had called my mom, and I had just, you know, told her what happened and she was like what you know she was just it was just so unexpected and it just took me back to everything that God had told me to do up into that time and I really was obedient and I really was trusting him and I had to call my sister in Christ and tell her because we had just was talking about you know God and how faithful he was and I was just like okay because this had to be a God thing because I was telling them everything that was going on with me I mean to the point that it had me like I, I was out here scared, like, oh my God, my taxes done got messed up with the world. What are they gonna do to me? Like, is they gonna try to come and get me? Like, I was thinking like that. So I was just like, oh my God. I was like, Lord Jesus, I don't know. I didn't know what was going on. So again, like I said, they won't let me file my kids. They was just like, no, this is what you're gonna get. And I just started telling my mom and my mom, she just started crying. She was at work. She started worshiping God, you know, because it had some stress had been on her as well with my whole family. It was like a domino effect. So, you know, my mom, she was just like, God, always look out for you. And I was like, yeah, mom, I was like, you always tell me. And she, I was like, but this won't nobody but God. But I was crying and I was just worshiping God. And I, and I began to call my friend and I was telling her because she was the only one that I had really had talked to about the situation. And when I tell you, I was just pr crying and I was just worshiping God. And when I tell y'all, it won't even a dollar amount. It, it ain't had nothing to do with the money. Let me just be clear on that. It had nothing to do with the money. I just had to tell y'all that because it was just the evidence of what God was doing. It was the evidence of my obedience. It was the evidence that he would never leave me nor forsake me. It was the evidence that even when I felt like he wasn't there, that he was there. It was the evidence that he heard my cry. It was the evidence that when I went to him in prayer and fasting, that it was not in vain. It wasn't even about that. I mean, he could have sent somebody to pay the bill. It was the fact of, it was the evidence. It was like, I just couldn't get it. I couldn't explain it to nobody. Like, no, don't, don't get it twisted and make, I don't want you to think that it's a money thing. No, 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 no. That's not it. It's the fact that God came through for me and nobody could do it, but God, it was going into almost a year and I was still going through this. And it built my faith. It built my character. It built my trust in God. And I couldn't do anything but lean on him. And still yet today, I am still leaning on him because I'm like, God, you really out here blowing my mind. Not only that, but it took me back to the fact that I was like, I told God that I wanted him to do something at me that people would know that it had to be a God thing because it couldn't have been nobody else. It was out of my hands. It was nothing that I could do. The whole situation was out of my hands. 
And when I say I just cried and I broke down and I just praised God because I'm like, God, you heard me. You heard my cry. You heard little old me. When I thought I wasn't getting through when I thought the prayers wasn't getting through when I thought that I wasn't doing something right. You were there, but you was building me up. For such a time as this, you were building me up in my faith. And it took me back to when I told my friend it with the week before that, that I was just out here trusting God. And I'm really out here trusting God. I'm really out here just talking to God. I'm really out here praying and worshiping God when people don't even know. I'm just really out here doing it in secret. Like, I'm not telling nobody nothing. And for people to tell me that they see it on me. And then for God to come in and say, okay, I'm going to blow their mind. But even when God did that, he said, girl, you ain't seen nothing yet. That was little. You ain't seen nothing yet. When I say I will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive, not just blessing you, but your whole family. Then my daughter, we end up talking and she says, I spoke with the president of the shipyard. I said, what? She said, I spoke with the president. They called me. I said, are you serious? She said, Ma, they said that they um, they can't, they're not supposed to fire nobody. If ain't nobody coming in there trying to kill nobody and got no bomb threats, they was not supposed to fire nobody. They had did a um written up a contract for them to sign. They not supposed to fire nobody. Um, uh, 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 if it was those two reasons, they trying to bomb the place. Other than that, they couldn't fire nobody because they need 21,000 workers. 21 thousand workers she says so this the president said you have a chance that you would not a chance but you're going to be getting your job back not only that but we're going to pay you for every week that you lost say so hallelujah when i tell y'all i said what i said what I mean, I was ready to get up and run around in the building because I was excited. I said, oh, my God. I said, didn't I tell you to praise God? And it just made me excited because I, he just, I'm like, God, you out here showing, you showing her. You're showing her who you are. You're showing up and you're showing out and you're showing her. You are showing my family the evidence. You're showing my family that everything that I talk about, everything that I bring to them from Bible study on the line that we talk about and these scriptures and different things of the old way of knowing and the new way of knowing, not just the new way of finding out, but the truth that I am giving to these my family and letting them know the real truth about God. Like you're really showing it through me. You're really working through me. It ain't nobody but you. Nobody but God. Nobody but God. And when I tell y'all, I just sit here today that when I say after you've done all you can, after you've fought, after you've prayed, after you've consecrated and prayed with your sisters and whatever it is you may do on a spiritual note, trust God. When you feel like after you've done all you can, after you've done all you can, you can't do nothing but trust God. When you're back against the wall, you can't do nothing but trust him. But why not not let our backs get against the wall and just trust him anyhow, in spite of what it looks like? Something small, just still trust God. Which takes me into the scripture of... Um, let me give you all my scriptures because I do have some scriptures here. Matthew 17 and 20. <laughs> excuse me did anybody want to read Matthew 17 or 20 it says because of your little faith he told them for truly I tell you if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will tell this mountain move from here to there and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. And I took that scripture and I held tight to it. 
I just held tight to it because I always hear, all you need is faith is the size of a mustard seed. And I'm like, yeah, I don't even know if I got the mustard seed and I seen a mustard seed. That's the smallest little seed. And I'm like, God, I just need to have a faith. Like I, I really want to have that faith, but I want my faith. I always pray for God to take my faith to a higher level. That has been a daily prayer of mine for years before I even came into Bible study and on this call I always knew like God I just want to have some big faith I just want to have big faith and when you go back to the word which I said was just in 17 and 20 and not even that but when you I know that when we tell God you know remind God of his word he is a man that has to perform it and he will bring heaven and earth to a close before his word you know come back void come back boy and then I have Romans 5 1 through 5 did anybody want to read that I'm pulling it up. Give me one second. And this is Romans chapter 5, 1 through 5. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have also obtained access through him by faith into this grace in which we stand and we boast and the hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our afflictions because we know that affliction produces endurance. Endurance produces proven character and proven character produces hope. This hope will not disappoint us because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has given to us. And that scripture alone was just mighty to me because even though I read my word, I've never came across this scripture and I've never heard, you know, like I said, I've been in church all my life. I've never even I heard you have faith as the size of a mustard seed and he can open up the windows of heaven if you try him. He can do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask for a thing. But, okay, we know that he can do all of these things. But what do I have to do? Because I know that I have to activate my faith. So that means I have to have work, too. I can pray and ask God to do all these things, but what am I doing? Like, am I working in the midst of while I'm waiting on God? Am I doing what I'm supposed to do as a child of God for even for God to even begin to move on my behalf? Or am I just saying this prayer one time and I'm just sitting back and ain't praying no more, ain't worshiping no more, ain't thinking about it no more. I'm just sitting like, okay, God going to do it. God going to do it, but I'm not activating it. I'm not working for God to begin to work on my behalf. And that's what that, um, faith does and that's what faith is we know that it is the evidence of things hope is faith is the substance of things hopeful but the evidence of things that has is not seen so I know that I had to you know activate my activate my faith because I know faith without works is dead so I knew that I had to work it and that's exactly what I was doing and my work was in prayer my work was in consecration my work was in being settlement my work was in letting things go that no longer served my purpose letting things and people go that meant me no good and saying goodbye and saying no and even though every day it was, you know, a pull on me and days I wanted to just be like, forget it. I don't want to do it. I wanted to throw in a towel, but I knew that I needed to stay close to God because I needed God to stay close to me because nobody in the world is going to do me like him. Nobody in this world is going to be God, but God. So, um, that just pretty much, um, sums up my message on tonight and, um, you know, Basically just saying to stand on faith and stand on God's promises and just know that he is a re your redeemer and that he still lives. Did anybody have anything that they wanted to say?
that was an awesome testimony. And I thank and praise God for you and your transparency. I thank you for um, allowing God to um, minister to you, to show himself and for you to um, just share with us, you know, just how God is moving and, and how he came through for you. And that gives hope to someone else who may be on the line, who may be going through, you know, who may don't know what to do. You know, the word of God tells us when there's, when you've done all to do, then you stand, you know, mm -hmm. we have to stand on God and his word and his promises. You know, God is righteous. You know, he is faithful. You know, his word will never return void. And faith, I think, is one of the hardest things for believers because we have to rely and trust on something that we don't see, you know, and that's hard for us in the flesh. But when you really buckle down and hunker down, like you said, and just when he makes it so you have to lean on him, you know, you can't lean on yourself. You can't lean on your family. When you really have to lean in and lean on God, he will surely show himself faithful. So we just thank and praise God for you, for sharing that awesome testimony, for encouraging us, you know, for reminding us, you know, um, just the power of, of your praise and the power of worship and being obedient. And you say it's something that um that resonated with me. And it's something that I've been um asking God to show me. And that's when we give to the poor, you know, that's where our blessings come. We're not taught this. We're taught if we give 10% to the church, but that's not what the word of God says. God says when you bless the poor. He said he will not only bless you, but he will bless your generations. He will bless your children. He will bless your seed. He will bless, you know, he will repay you. So to get in the mindset of just blessing, you know, somebody that's less fortunate, a family, a person, a beggar, a stranger, a, a co-worker. I mean, even co-workers are poor, you know. So if God lays it on your heart to give to somebody, less fortunate than you, he will surely repay you. It doesn't always come the way you think it's going to come, but trust me, he's going to repay you. And that's something that I've been studying recently. It's something that's been ministering to me. And I thank you again, because you, your testimony just showed that, you know, God will repay when we are faithful, when we bless somebody who we, you know, who, who is in a less position than we are especially like you see, you gave your last, you know? So again, that was just, I'm encouraged. Um, I'm sure that there are other ladies on the line who are encouraged, but we just truly thank and praise God for you. And um, God is awesome, you know, and thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Um, Evangelist Marie, because, I know it was all God, but it was also you being obedient and allowing God to use you to help me when I was going through on a spiritual level and praying with me and fasting for me. So, you know, it, that's the evidence, too, of me like, you know, because some people can pray with you. Some people can pray with you all day or say, I'm praying for you, girl. You know, I'm praying. We praying. I don't prayers with this with chorus say them prayers ain't going no higher than the ceiling. I don't know though. You know, I'm gonna just say, but um, you know, it, it was it's the evidence to me too that, you know, us being in prayer together and us being in um fasting together, us reading our word and coming on a line and just, you know, learning the truth, like I said, it's evidence of that my teachings that I'm what I'm getting and the food, you know, the meat and the potatoes and everything that y'all are feeding us on this line. That's not in vain. It's the truth. It's real. It's the word. And it's setting us free from of what every, the world is thinking of what the world may be saying that don't really know God. Like we are learning God and getting in his word every day. That is amazing to me because it's just evidence to keep going, keep staying on the line, keep reading your word, keep praying with your sisters, keep fastening with them because I'm going to blow y'all mind. 
So, you know, I thank God for for you all as well. I definitely thank God for you all. Hallelujah. Praise God. Listen, I had I, I I came to a point in my life where I had to just totally surrender to God and trust God fully. Um, and you know, it's so rewarding because that one thing, that that word, the evidence, you know, that <laughs> my spirit is jumping because the evidence, the evidence, the evidence, the evidence that he hears, the evidence that he cares about us, the evidence that he feels. He understands us, that he feels how we feel, Lord. I mean, it's just so amazing. And I'm just here to just continue to praise God that he is just so good. He is faithful. He is a God that cannot lie. And I'm just so thankful. I'm thankful that I'm just so excited to see your growth. My God, it's just such a blessing, Lord. I just thank you, Father. I just praise the Lord. Your growth is evidence. So again, I just praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Lord, you are amazing. And it's more to come. Praise you, Father. Amen. Thank you, God. You know, you my sister. I'm going to call you up. Girl, let me tell you what God did today. You know. Like, we going to talk about it. So, you know, I, I definitely, you know, thank God for you because, you know, we've been, you know, growing. We've been growing and we've been growing together. And I, I, I just, I just, I thank God. Um, where am I saying that? All right. Do any of the other sisters have anything to say just about about your face? Just about, you know, want to talk about where you at, you know, how, how the message may have uplift you to keep you going, to keep you to, you know, stay strong. I actually got on the line late. Um, I was ministering to one of my daughters, but um, I appreciate you. Thank God to be able to partake in his continual um, unfailing and unconditional love for all of us. And just with your testimony, you know, so I'm just honored to just be able to partake in what he's doing, you know, if that makes sense. And just him showing his glory and who he is and it's just beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful to me. Amen. Come on now, Evangelist Gwen. Where you at? I was just about to call her up. Where you at? I'm right here just praising the Lord. <laughs> oh my goodness. That was so good. It was just so good, so good. And I'm just like, and I just love how Chris put it. She said, your face and your growth is the evidence. It's the evidence. Hallelujah. I'm just thanking and praising God. And like Sister Erica said, y'all already done said it. It ain't nothing left for me to say, but you know, you just be on repeat. But it's worth repeating because like Sister Erica said, it's just the proof that he loves you, that he's mindful of you that he hears you like you said it's not even about the money at this point it's just the fact that god you're here god you showed up god you're faithful god you are you who you said you are you know it's just all of that and i'm just excited because your testimony is beautiful and i'm so glad that i pressed record because you know i be forgetting to record y'all and i am definitely going to put this on the um the, the text so that way the lady the link on the text so they could go back and listen for those who may have missed it because somebody needs to hear this and it's definitely a, a lot of people need to hear it and it's definitely an encouragement and we just thank you thank you thank you for being honest transparent and just raw and we just thank you for just coming on the line today and just ministering to us thank you thank you thank you 
No problem. It's all God. It's all God. It's not me. I'm not taking credit for nothing. I'm just going to keep being obedient. That's all I can do is just keep being obedient. I appreciate you said that, you know, the the testimonies and things be, you know, all of our testimonies and stuff be so beautiful. Um, however, it's just beautiful that that God does what he does because he is who he is. Not necessarily because of what we do. It's for our growth. However, you know, he does what he does because that's who he is. And yeah, it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. That's I mean, that's all I can say. <laughs> and I, let me just share something with y'all that I shared on my page the other day. I mean, listen, y'all, I know that God hears, you know, but I, I'll be honest with you. It blows me away every single time that God does what he do I just I just it just makes me just elated like oh my goodness so listen so I saw this video <laughs> oh man this man he was in the woods right man this thing was so powerful I don't know I had this was a, a late night because I was sick. I had been sick. So this was late night, probably like two, three in the morning or something like this. But listen, man, this man was in the woods and I don't know what, what he was doing in the woods, whether he was hunting or what. But, you know, he was like he had just been talking to the Lord. And, you know, and he just was like, you know, God, you know, sometimes, you know, I don't know if you hear me or not. So, you know, he was like, and I have been praying to you. And he was like, uh, he said, but God, if you hear me, he said, if you hear me, he saw an eagle. He said, if you hear me, he said, land that eagle on me or bring the eagle close enough to me. That eagle, y'all. Oh my goodness! That eagle landed on this man's shoulder. Listen, when I tell y'all I lost it at two, three o'clock in the morning off of this 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 testimony, this man's testimony, and the eagle was just just sitting on this man's like back shoulder. I mean, it was amazing. It was amazing because he was going to get the glory. He was going to get the glory because he heard his prayer, but he's still going to get the glory just because of who he is. Hallelujah. He hears, he answers and he hears. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So if I find that video, y'all, I'm going to share it with y'all because, man, my words have nothing on the actual video. It was not even long at all. It was amazing. And it was another reminder that the Lord hears us. So I just thank the Lord. And I just had to share that with y'all because, whoo, that thing took me out. That was awesome. That was awesome. Yes, it was. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. All right, ladies. Well, I'm not going to hold y'all too long. Um, did anybody have any prayer requests? I do. I have an elderly neighbor. Um, when we used to have Bible studies here at the house, um, she was, uh, she used to come down and do Bible study with us. And I just found out, um, uh, my husband saw one of her relatives and found out that about two months ago, she was rushed to the hospital when she was supposed to be coming home. They put a pacemaker in, but then she had a stroke and then they sent her to um, a rehab and then she got COVID 
and then she had another stroke and now she has dementia and her family is leaving her in that nursing home. And that really grieves me and hurts my heart to see, um, her name is Mother Lewis, that she's being so discarded by her family. And um, I, they so, I don't want to say the word, but they are, they, they can't even tell me where she is. Like, you know, well, do you know what, well, where they send her? Well, I don't know. I got to find out. Like, how do you not know? So please, y'all, just pray for Mother Lewis. Pray that God will cover and keep and protect her um, wherever she is. And prayerfully that we'll be able to find out where she is so that we can go and visit her. And you said Mother Lewis. Did you say Mother Lewis? Yeah. Okay. Anybody else have any prayer requests? I don't have a prayer request, but before you pray out, um, I put on the chat, y'all, I know there was so much going on on the chat um, over the last few days that 